think so. Now, I want to say like in the years past, it's, it's usually like, uh, I might want to go, I might not. But I don't think he's physically came out and was like, you know, I'm gone. No, I, I think he just always is joking retirement. Like he, nobody knows what they're going to get with him. But I don't think he's ever been like he doesn't want to be in Green I think Bay. I'm to pull a Kyrie Irving for real. Yeah. You think so? I'm wait four days and be like, look, I'm out, I'm out of here. What y'all going to do? Because, I mean, if, if, I mean, at yeah. this point, what are you deciding? Like, what are you, you know? <laughs> is it your future or is it playing well, somewhere else? I th- you know what I mean? I, I think you want to play. I, I think it's it's weird, too, because of the Jordan Love thing. Like, are they just ready to move? Like, it is probably time for Green Bay and Rodgers to break up. Like, it's been a long time. You guys haven't accomplished the greatest feats. But wherever he goes, I doubt he wins another Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. It's, it's been a while, man. He got to that first one. He ain't, ain't come back. But, I mean, Jordan Love, he definitely looked good in that, that short period of time, bro. Like, I remember Aaron Rodgers came in yeah. against Dallas. You remember that? And uh, I think I think Brett Favre yeah. got hurt, and he came in and diced us up, bro. And uh, I ain't saying I ain't saying Jordan yeah, Love is Aaron Rodgers, but, I mean, he came in and he had some zip on it. I mean, you could see the talent and kind of what they saw, you know what I mean, coming out of the draft, so. I mean, if I was them, do you do you do you well, kind of sit there and wait for Aaron Rodgers at this point, or do you just kind of just move forward and, and rebuild? I think it might have been Jordan Love that sparked it because I think he, like his camp, pretty much came out and they were like, "Like trade us or start us? What are we doing here at this point? Like it's been too long." But then I think on the other side, Rodgers, you never know if he's going to play another year, so it's like this confusing, like, bro, yeah. what do you want to do? I don't know. It's the whole situation. So hit me out, right? Green Bay, mm-hmm. they pick up the phone. Aaron Rodgers say, I don't want to be traded. So they call Vegas and they say, listen, give me Waller and Derek Carr for Aaron Rodgers and maybe a pick or something like that. Who says no? I think Derek Carr. Derek Carr don't want to he, he He's don't got the go no Green trade Bay? close. He can't play outside. Oh, sure, sure. He can't do cold weather. And I don't think I don't think Green Bay would deal with that. Like Maybe you could do. I mean, like, I, I don't uh, even know why I threw Derek Carr in there because I mean, obviously they have Jordan Love. You got the young guys, so maybe, uh, maybe Darren Waller right. in a pick. You get some more weapons for your young quarterback. I mean, you got a Christian Watson. You, you know, what I mean, you still got a Romeo Dobbs. You get one of these premier tight ends. The defense is still a, a good, you know, what I mean, good unit. You get another weapon. Still got Aaron Jones in that run game. I, mean, I like, you know, if you want to rebuild for the future, I like that a lot, actually. No, I like that a lot. But then it's like, what do you think? Like ideally, you can give up for Rogers pick wise. Is that like a two ones, one one? I mean, I think it definitely have to be conditional. You know, what I mean, uh, right. I, I can't say he's not worth the one. He's still a top ten quarterback in this league, so obviously, you know, what I mean, it's it's going to have to be a one, and then maybe another pick where it's like, uh, you know, maybe a third round pick that can turn into a two, or a two that can turn into another right. one a couple years down the road, as long as he's, he plays like two or three more seasons, or you know. Like, if he just hops up and says, I retire. That's man, fair. Now nah, you ain't getting that pick. On the other side of that, what do you think Derek Carr's trade value is? Mm, I'm trying to think of some. I mean, what, Jimmy G. Nah, Jimmy G. He ain't get traded. I'm trying to think of, like, value. Who was the last year they get? Carson Wentz. What did Carson Wentz go for last year? Like I a 2-3, like right? Three. So, I look at it like if, if Carson Wentz can go for a 2-3, Derek Carr is somewhere in the same ballpark, so I would have to look at it like, you know, two, possibly a one, depending on how desperate that team is. Because, I mean, you know, people, the media will fool you to believe he was some terrible quarterback. I mean, he's still like mm-hmm. a top top 15, right. borderline 13 quarterback in this league, and that's worth something. I think, at best, it's a day two pick, maybe like a third, maybe a fourth even. Because I think, unless he takes a pay cut, he's still guaranteed $120 million. And that's a lot of money. For Derek Carr? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I he's, think he's it's three years, 120 up. guaranteed. Probably some type of restructure or something like that. I think so. Where, like, who do you think is bold enough to go get Carr like, and pay $40 million a year if they have to? I mean, off the bat, the, the first that's thing tough, I right? said, right, I thought it made sense where I said Houston Texans. You know, um, just because, mm-hmm. you know, his brother there, I think he grew up rooting for the Texans and things like that. But if I'm them, it doesn't make sense for the Texans, right? You know, obviously, you you have the top quarterback. Right. I mean, draft pick. You know I mean? You draft the quarterback. But let's say they want to continue building for the future. You know what I mean? Does it make sense to try to win now? Does he try to win now and build around their car, keep building a team? Or do you just 
get a guy or keep building your team and try to continue tanking for the next couple of years and keep stacking, the, you know what I mean, stacking the deck. I think, you know, Commanders, possible. I thought uh, mm. New Orleans Saints, you know, he has a history with Dennis Allen. Yeah, yeah, That's that would, that would be though. nice. Um, anybody else? Uh, the Panthers, but I'm assuming they're probably looking for a young guy, possibly. So, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. you got you got a couple of teams out there. I think it makes sense for the Saints, though. I like the Saints for Derek Carr. Rodgers, I have no idea. Because if that's the case and they keep him, where's love going? Like, who knows? You know, like, that's, yeah. like, weird altogether, that whole situation. I mean, every team has done it before, so I don't think they have no problem kind of just, you know, running the same play back. I mean, nobody knew Aaron Rodgers would be right. Aaron Rodgers until, you know, they gave him a chance, you know. But speaking of Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles, we do have a Super yeah, Bowl yeah, to talk uh, about. Uh, we here? Off the bat. So, Chief just placed Miko Hardman on IR. I did see that uh, Kadarius Tony and Juju practiced on Monday. I don't know to what capacity. But is there a path to victory for the Chiefs if, we'll say, their top three wide receivers are out? I mean, that's going to be tough, tough against this defense because my next question is who we're relying on at that point. I mean, obviously you have Kelsey, Kelsey. but, <laughs> you know, it's Kelsey and who else, right? So I think they, they're they going to need a couple right. of these guys in some type of capacity, man, even if one of them is a decoy. Um, but, you know, I mean, you, you do have Scott Moore out there. Scott Moore, I believe, with the given opportunities, he could be a weapon. Um, I'm trying to think of anybody else that stands out. I mean, that might be it. That might be it. MVS. MVS. I mean, MVS decent. Will it? Could it be enough? He's off and on. I, I think more so it'll fall down it, to just Mahomes and his ball. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. Yeah, I think uh, MVS's contract says that it should be enough. So, <laughs> yeah, facts, like, facts. That was a three-year, thirty million dollar. Yeah, that stinks for Juju though, man. Like he was kind of on track to have a breakout year and started getting injuries again. Yeah, I think Juju is who he is. But I, that's that's fair. Now. We know Patrick Mahomes has the bum ankle and Jalen Hurts has a bad shoulder. In my opinion, I think the more concerning injury here is Hurts' shoulder because he didn't seem to – like Mahomes handled it on the ankle. It wasn't the best, but he did what he had to do. But Hurts was having a really hard time making some some good throws. Um, what are your thoughts there? Nah, I agree. I think I would have to lean to Hurts' shoulder. But it, it's like a weird dynamic where, you know, both of these – both of these guys, we haven't seen them kind of kind of put pressure on those situations, right? So when I when I what I'm saying is I'm thinking about it from a standpoint of um you have Mahomes in there, right? But you know, it, as far as mm-hmm. the pass rush and what the Bengals was able to do to him, they didn't really move him off of his spot too much. Everything was quick. Um, you know, what I mean, they wasn't rushing him. You, you know, what I mean, it didn't seem to have any effect on it. And the same thing for Jalen Hurts. I mean, the the Eagles, their defense played great ball. The run game was heavy. He never really had to sit there and rely on his arms, so we didn't get to see that side of it. So I think the same can be said for both. The only reason I would say Jalen Hurts from the standpoint is I th- I never seen him in a position where you have a quarterback like Mahomes that possibly, you know what I mean, he's coming off a week of rest or whatever, and they go up on you 7 to 10. Like, how do, do you believe Jalen Hurts is a quarterback who can, you know, throw him back in the game if they going against a top offense like this? I, I think a, a healthy Jalen Hurts, yes. But – Obviously, we don't know the uh, severity of the shoulder injury, but unfortunately, I think it would be compromised in this game. I think he has like the competitive nature to make it happen, yeah. you know, because um, Philly, one thing I will say, I don't think you can force them to run to throw the ball. They're going to run the ball as long as they can until like the last possible second, you know, like they won't panic. And so I mean, that's run. what no, so I think that. No. No, no, I think that that uh, pretty much helps them to keep control of the clock. That's what's helped them all year. Yeah, but but then that's what I'm saying, the flip side of it, right? So you you are able to continue to run, continue to run. But let's say, that's what I'm saying, the Chiefs, if they go up 10, you think the Eagles going to continue to run and run and run? Mm-hmm. Or do it at, at I think so. The, I, the clock become a factor, you know what I mean? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think until the last possible like second, like, okay, we've chewed too much clock. Let's switch to this pass game. I don't think they're – comfortable enough to rely completely on the arm of Jalen Nah, and that's what I mean and I, that just speaks to the volume of their team and how they built it man and even like what's so mm-hmm. irritating it's almost like uh, Coach Sirianni is out there playing man and that kind of just leads me into another segue right uh, you know if, if you kind of just look at it right it's like run right RPO RPO pass action fake pass action RPO step back draw 
step back RPO, Jalen Hurts run action. Right. And it's like this consistent thing where they just doing the same. I I, I could have swear it just seemed like the same 10 plays and uh, just a counter based off of that. So you had Julian Love come out and he said, you know, any coach could, to- could coach this team. You know what I mean? He ain't doing nothing great. Like, do you agree with that? Like, as far as how deep the Eagles team is, and do you think Nick Sirianni deserves some credit for that? No, I think Sirianni definitely deserves credit. I think what – and what you're saying makes sense. Like, each play that they call when it's an RPO is three plays in one, and it's all key on Hurts to read the defense. If you give me this, I'm going with option one. You give me that, it's two. You give me that, it's three. So, really, he's so good at reading it that he's able to create these plays. And I think it's it's genius. Um, but he wasn't doing that before Sirianni showed up, not to the extent he is now. Yeah, but then if you, you look at it, like, is that a Sirianni thing or um, is that the OC? You know what I mean? I don't think is calling plays over there. You know what I mean? The, the OC they have now is no, the OC no, he's they have not. Now is getting some opportunities. You, you're hearing um, he's getting the job interviews. So is it Sirianni? Is it the system? I mean, I, I think we you, you always got to give a coach credit. I mean, you don't just line up and win on Sundays. You know what I mean? It's, it's a tough league. You know what I mean? Right. And they are a deep team, so all credit no, goes to Howard Roseman, if anybody to me. But Jalen Hurst has played well, too, I think. I think Sirianni is a kick-ass coach. I do think this is a system that just works because they have the yeah. right players. And in, in my opinion, you have an offensive line that's built to pass, protect, or run. There's not many offensive lines like that in the game. So they can switch gears at any point with that offensive line, whereas I think the Chiefs, unfortunately, I think Orlando Brown is more of a – running game yeah. tackle, but they're trying to use him in pass protection and that doesn't work too well with him. He's not a bad left tackle. He's just a bad left tackle in pass protection. You know yeah. what I mean? Whereas the Eagles, their line is good, like really good. I mean, but – But on the other side – Now, I would say this. I mean, people look at the Eagles' defense, right? And, you know what I mean? It's a talented group, but they can be run on. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to knock, you know what I mean, what they've done – like I talked to one of my guys, you know, he's a he's a Philly fan. And, uh, he's like, I ain't calling you to brag, bro. So I say, what's up, man? And he just, uh, <laughs> I I could, I could hear the excitement in his voice, man. He like, man, I don't know what to do, man. I, I'm just, I want to play man every chance I get. I can't wait. But he was like, he said something that just stood out to me. He was like, you know, this was the easiest road to the Super Bowl I could ever imagine. And I said, I said, yeah, you kind of mm-hmm. right. What you mean, bro? He said, man, you know, he said we got the Giants, blow out. And he said, you know, they won't no good. And then he was like, you know, the 49ers, he was like, bro, he was like, they lost their quarterback. And he was like, I know it can't be this easy, right? And I say all that to say, um, you know, as far as this path and where they like what happens when they face some adversity for the first time in the playoffs. I don't think they've, mm-hmm. you know, had a test since, was it like, would you would say Dallas or, I, you know? Like they they wasn't playing that yeah, best ball, much. you know, as it was. And then, you know, they was able to get it, get it together. They beat the Giants. And then, you know, play the Giants again in the soup. I mean, in the playoffs. So I mean, like, do you think it's something to that as far as the adversity they've been playing? I mean, I do. No, I think that they did have a cupcake schedule. Even if you look during the regular season, they didn't play anybody for real. But you gotta play with the hand you're dealt and they took advantage of the opportunity. So I do think like they deserve yeah, to be here. Do I think they had an easy path? Absolutely. But I mean if we had an easy nah, path, I'd be off. I, I too, wish you know I had I mean? that like, path. <laughs> Shit. Right. But no, I, I think they are in their spot. On the other side, though, I do want to ask you. So you've got Andy Reid, and I think today or yesterday marked 22 years since he was hired for the from the Eagles. For the Eagles, my bad. Um, you've got Reid going up against the Eagles, his former team along with Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman, who were also there during his time in Philadelphia. Who do you think this means more to, that front office or to Andy Reid? Oh, for sure, Andy Reid. It's, it's more, it important more important for Andy Reid. Oh, oh, yeah. And, I, and I'm willing to bet, I think, the players in the building know that, like, you know what I mean? This is literally Andy right. Reid's, like, you know, legacy game. Like, you know what I mean? You, If you can coach a team to the Super Bowl and then they come back and win the Super Bowl against the same team, I mean, you know, that's equivalent to Tom Brady coming back and beating the Patriots in the Super Bowl. You know, that feeling and and what you right. get from that, I mean, you know. And for sure, I, I'm sure Jeff Lurie and them, they want to beat their old coach or whatever, but, uh, you know what I mean? They, they ain't the ones in the locker room right now. So, you know. Right. All right, so just uh just to piggyback off that and speaking of legacies, right, Um, you think about the two quarterbacks in this game, right, and – you have uh, Mahomes on one side, 
and you have a uh, Hertz on one side. Both of them, both of these guys is looking to solidify themselves in uh, two different ways, right? You have a Mahomes here. Um, so my first question is, if he was to win this game, like, what does that do for his legacy? Like, does that solidify him as a solidify him as a Hall of Fame quarterback just off of this one win? I think I got a hot take for this one. Mahomes. You're talking Mahomes. I think if Mahomes were to not be playing in the Super Bowl right mm-hmm. now and his career ended. He's not a first ballot, but I think he does have a shot Already. into the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame with what he's accomplished so far. This game, if he wins it, makes and him I a agree. first ballot Hall of Fame. I agree, man. You know what I mean? So, what is it? Four AFC Championship games, two AFC Championships. Three Super Bowl appearance. One Super Bowl win. Yeah, like, even if he loses, like, two Super Bowl appearance, like, that's crazy. But I do think, and I know I've said it a couple times to you, Losing that Super Bowl to Brady really s- stuck a knife in his chances as far as catching yeah. Brady on Super Bowls. Because if you were looking at it as Mahomes two, Brady six right now, that's attainable. But I think two and seven is completely different. Oh, yeah, he's, he's not know? catching. It, it's hard to keep a dynasty that long. But, I mean, if anybody can do it, I mean, right. he, he's the guy. You know what I mean? He's un- unbelievable. Um, you think about talent-wise, his, his bar, you know, nobody's really close to it outside of like an Aaron Rodgers, whatever. But then, um, you know, I mean, I, I thought about that, too. And I was like, you know, it's kind of crazy you say that. I said, I, I think he's borderline already Hall of Fame. It's it's crazy to say. It feels weird to say mm-hmm. for a guy that this young in his career. But I think if he gets that second one, for sure, I, I think it not only puts him in the Hall of Fame, but it kind of propels him to be in the conversation of, all right, we, we list all these quarterbacks. How great is a Patrick Mahomes? You have all some of these top guys where it's Manning right. and – you know, Marino and Montana, like some of these guys haven't won and some have, but to win, you know, this early and ahead of stats that he has, you know, a start like this is just crazy. And that Jalen Hurst, if he was to win, um, like where does that place him amongst the top quarterbacks? Because I kind of thought back to last season, you know what I mean, and um, Matt Stafford. Like I thought it was crazy. He had he mm-hmm. had a talent. I, mean, I don't want to knock him too much, but then he got that win and you started hearing, uh, yeah, Matt Stafford's top five. Or top six was top as much as high as top four actually, and I was like, no, that 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 team, you know, what I mean, say keyword, that team was great. The Rams was great. That defense, like, mm-hmm. was it was it Stafford, and is he really a top five quarterback? Like, and if Hurst wins this, like, what conversation does that propel him to as far as like, you know, what I mean, the top quarterbacks? Like, is it the team, or does he get credit for you know, what I mean, making this run, and then does it put him like firm in that top five, or you know, what does that put him for you? I think, unfortunately, for Hertz, like with his backstory of getting benched at Alabama, going in the second round, like he just, there's this narrative that's already pre written for him. So I think people will have a hard time putting him in the top five, right? But I do think, if I'm being honest with you, because I was really trying to write this down before, like who are my top five quarterbacks? Fantasy, of course, Jalen Hurts is going oh, yeah. in your top five. But is he a top five arm talent? No, not in my opinion. But on the other side of it is he's a top five athlete at the quarterback position. So what he can do with his legs does make up for what he doesn't do with his arm, which I do think puts him in the conversation because he is what gets the offense humming. You know what I mean? Like he does command the line of scrimmage. He does establish the run game. He controls the clock. He makes the reads. So I do do think he is a top five quarterback. I think – What are your thoughts there? Well, we ain't going to agree on this. I'm going to (laughs) be – But uh, I I like Jalen Hurst, man. I you know I mean even before the season, you know even as a Cowboy fan, it's like he's a guy that you know you kind of just root for. You don't really you know hate the Eagles, but he's he seemed like a likable guy, man. And I, I thought he had a lot of you know chances to prove people wrong this year. I didn't think it would be an MVP caliber season though, and which it has. So I don't want to take that right. away from him. Um, I do think they have a, have a great team over there. But uh, top five, you know, I think I would still have to, you know, Mahomes, Burrow. I would. Would you take Aaron Rodgers over her still? No. So it's, on my tough, list, man, because I you know. limit, I eliminated okay. him, and we just lost Brady. But I, I didn't even include Rodgers in the thought because of his age. Well, Herbert, I, I think we we have to talk about it. Like if if he if he wins and how he wins it, which matters, and uh, he's coming out and he's balling out, mm-hmm. then uh, I think we can we can revisit this this conversation after the fact. But uh, uh, I, I just think it was just, you know what I mean, strange. Just something to just think about, like how Matt Stafford was considered a top five quarterback last year when the Super Bowl. And then you, you don't even hear that that uh, debate anymore. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. Well, let me let me ask you this. It's kind of off topic. If you put Hurts on the 
Chargers offense and Herbert on the Eagles offense, who do you think is a better player? I'm going with Herbert, bro. I think I think Herbert Agreed. with that defense and that arm and yeah, he, he'll light it up. So I mean. That's what, kind of my thought process. There. The same thing with Burrow. Like, if you give Burrow uh, Philly's offensive line, shh, watch out. <laughs> you know what I mean? What? So, you right. know, I, I, I think he's up there, though, top 10. You know what I mean? I'll give him his respect until he gives me a reason to push him down that, down that ledge, whatever. But So, what you thinking, man, for the Super Bowl, man? What's of your, uh, you got any hot takes, predictions? I, I think predictions, no. But I was thinking uh, in regard to like, the key factors of the game. And I'll just talk from the Chiefs' point of view, and then if you want to run behind me on your thoughts there, I think the Chiefs, you got to you gotta protect Mahomes, obviously. That's your your fancy right. card that got you to this thing. On the other side, you got to score points. Score points and score points because the Phillies going to be able to score on the Chiefs mm-hmm. in the first half. Once they get used to that speed of Philadelphia around halftime, make the appropriate adjustments, I think the Chiefs can – stop them on offense but on the other side the Chiefs always come out hot and don't do anything in the second half you know so I think whoever can continue to score points in the fourth quarter will win this game because I don't think it'll be a blowout either way it could be (laughs) it could it could could be but I I think the main thing like you said I think it the first I think the first 15 minutes matter so much man like how these teams come Mm -hmm. on I think whoever falls behind early has a chance to get left like really like uh the way i look at it i think yeah. you know if if the eagles come out there and um you know they they score fast and and you know they get a chance to put that pass rush on Mahomes on a bad leg and he's forced to not lean on that run game i think it can get bad i think it can get ugly and mm-hmm. i also think if the chiefs come out there and they punch him in the mouth put up seven or maybe ten and get a hit and then the eagles you know what i mean they, they get the feeling that hey look i think i'm gonna have to throw it a little bit more and I can't rely on the the, the threat of the, the right. run, you know what I mean, the run pass option as much. I think you have a chance for, you know, Chiefs to, to put the imprint on as well. But uh, if I'm leaning one way, if, I, if I'm a make a prediction, for some reason, bro, I got the Chiefs, man. I just think, you know, everybody knocking them, everybody leaning Philly, everybody was thinking Philly is the best team all year round. And I really think this is a, a statement game for Mahomes as, as well as Andy Reid, man. So I think it's a coming out party for him. Well, which it already has, man, but yeah. I, I agree. I like the Chiefs in this game. I think I'm way more comfortable if the Chiefs are down 10 than if the Eagles Absolutely. are down 10. Because I think Mahomes can bring you back. But in my mind, I'm like Andy Reid and Mahomes or Sirianni and Hurts. Like, which combo do I like better? And it's Mahomes and Big Red yeah, all yeah. day. You know what I mean? But now that leads me to a better question. So you got the Chiefs winning. Who do you think wins the uh, Super Bowl MVP this year? Oh, statement game for Mahomes, bro. Like, you think about the story, like the narrative, right? And, uh, you know, I, I hate to get into conspiracies mm-hmm. or whatever, but I just felt like, you know, once the Eagles won, like this matchup made the most sense. Like you, you have all the headlines. Like you say, you got the Andy Reid, bro. You got uh, the Kelsey brothers. You know what I mean? You got both number one seeds. You got, you know what I mean? So much goes into this. But then I think, you know, you, you have a quarterback who's trying to solidify his legacy, placing himself among some of the top quarterbacks, the greats, the Hall of Famers. And to win this this game on a bad leg, doing so, oh man, you know what right. I mean? that, that that'll be an amazing MVP performance. And um, you know, if anybody, I think Mahomes. And then I, I would assume the the Eagles win this game. Um, on a you know with Hurts, man, I really do. So I, either way, QB, QB. I think if if Philly were to win this game, I think it would probably be a defensive guy because that means somebody did something spectacular to shut Mahomes down. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, just Slay? just a thought there. Like Hassan Reddick, something like I could, that. I can see Reddick. Slay, even? Yeah. Now, if Jalen Hurts were to win the Super Bowl and the Super Bowl MVP, man, as well as the regular season MVP, let's say, because that's still up in the air, I think that that's like the craziest story in sports in a long time. Yeah. You know? Like the story behind that is crazy. That's a feel-good story, but unfortunately – I, I think I'm on the other side of it. I tell you what, though, if he do, if he does do that, Philly better, better bring out the Mack truck. Go ahead, go ahead and back oh, it up. You know yeah. what I mean? Back it up to his doorstep. You know, you, they're gonna have to pay up big time. And I think he already has the leverage. But if he gets that on the cherry on top, get a Super Bowl, they're gonna have to pay. They're gonna pay up a mm-hmm. lot. You know what I mean? And they got a lot of talent to keep around over there, Philly. 